All right, for this tutorial, we're going to take what we did in the previous one and basically reverse the process so that instead of creating lines from a normal on a surface, we're going to create a surface from the lines. All right, so we'll just take all of this and uh, disable it, but we'll keep our attractor point exactly where it is. And so we're going to start by creating a set of points. And so what we want to make is a nice rectangle or a square of points. So we're going to grab a slider and a series component. And I don't mind it starting at 0 and having a count of 10, but the step size is probably going to be a bit of an issue for me. So I'll just bump this slider up to 100. Plug that into my step size, and then plug that into X and Y, and uh, that's probably about right for me. And then I'm just going to graph the X value so that we get a grid of points. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference in this point geometry again. And like we did before, we're going to take the distance between point A and uh, or between the points in this grid and our reference point. And then based on that, we're going to create a line with start, direction, and length. So the start is going to be all of our origin points. The direction will be a Z vector, so we'll just go upwards. And then our distance will define the length. And so what we get is this really nice sort of bowl form formation. We'll just turn off our origin points. And you can kind of see how that works. So what we can do is we can grab the end points of these lines. And we can use these basically to construct a surface. So what I'm going to use is a surface from points, and so this surface from points asks me for a grid of points. We're going to use the endpoints of these curves, and u. So u asks for a number of points in the u direction. In order to do that, we are going to attach a slider to our series just to make things easier. I'll set it to a value. 10. Okay, and then we're going to plug it in to our U. And you're going to notice immediately that it throws an error. What is the error? Uh, surface could not be fitted. Okay, we're going to try flattening our points. Oh, what do you know? It works. Basically, in order to use the surface from grid, you just need to have a flat list of data from which to project. And so we'll turn off these lines, and now what we have is this really nice, very smooth surface. It probably doesn't look very smooth at the moment, but I can just turn my high quality preview on and we can see that it is in fact very smooth. All right, so then we can take this point and we can move it around and it'll keep doing real funky things with our surface. Now, let's take that a step further and let's bring a second point in. Um, grab those two points, just make a copy of that point component and we'll set multiple points. So, when we plug it into the distance this time, going to do something a wee bit weird. Um, basically what it's doing is with our uh, longest, we'll just uh, preview the lines. So basically for our longest list component, it's, uh, it's looking at one of these points, probably uh, this point first, and then for the rest of the items in the list, the other nine items, it uh, takes the distance from this point. 
So what we need is we need some sort of way to average between these two points. So what we're going to do is we are going to flatten this list of points coming out of here. And then we're going to graft with these points coming out here. Now it's doing something a little bit weird at the moment, but just bear with me. Okay, so what we get is two, uh, two lists of data, or two lists of data, and each of them have a hundred items in them. We can confirm that using a parameter viewer. Okay, and so it's basically giving us a distance away from each point. So what we need to do is we need to take the average of each of these, uh, of the first point and the second point. And so what we sort of need, instead of two lists with a hundred items, we need a hundred lists with two items each. Luckily there exists a very simple component called flip matrix, which flips the direction, which flips the matrix of the list. So now we have data with 100 branches and two items in each list as opposed to two lists with 100 items. Okay, so now we're going to average those points out and when we flatten that we should have 100 resulting items and we plug that in. And you can see that we are kind of getting a result, but it's more so creating a flat bottom rather than doing anything so useful. So we'll see what happens if we, uh, if we drag these points out a bit further. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not quite doing what we want, so maybe average isn't quite the right way to do it. What if we tried a multiplication? Um, so what we have is two items in each list, so we need to get both of those items out, so we can multiply them by each other. We use a list item function, and we can just add the second item into this list by clicking the add output on the list item, and then when we... Oh, Sorry, I forgot to flatten the list before I plugged it in. We do get an astronomical result, and that's because the multiplication the multiplication has worked, but it's uh, it's given us vastly skewed results. So we'll grab our remap numbers component. Um, we we'll use a bounds component again. And we'll construct a domain between zero and maybe two hundred. And then we'll plug the result into our length. And as we increase the value, you can see we're now getting a much more dramatic inflection on our surface. And as we bring these points in, you can see that we're really, we're really getting quite an interesting result there. So now, let's take this a step further, and let's say we wanted to use any number of points. Let's say we wanted to add maybe another four points. Let's see what happens if we do that. Um, what we're immediately going to get is probably not much of a result by nature of the fact that we're only going to be averaging the first and second result. And luckily, what we can use instead of a multiplication component is a mass multiplication component, which will multiply everything together 
in the list. So it will multiply all six of these items together. We'll flatten that list and we'll plug it into our bounds. Oh, sorry, not into our bounds. Uh, we have to firstly plug it into the value and into the bounds. And there we go, there's our result. Now it's probably not looking great just because the values are so closely spaced together. So maybe we could try increasing the count on our surface. Oh, accidentally under the points. No, that hasn't quite worked that well. Change that back to 10. I'll, um, I'll reconnect this in and maybe we'll just try to delete a few of these points. And then we'll re reference them. Okay, there we go, so four points. Seems to work quite nicely. And there we go. That's a pretty interesting result, I'd say. So now, you can technically do this with any number of attraction points. Just be aware that for every point you add, it's going to add another 100 calculations or however many points you've got in here. And so as we saw, it didn't really work that well beyond four points, but we could we could bump up the resolution if we wanted. The trouble was the series component meant that we we weren't getting the resolution in the right place. So maybe we'll grab a range component instead, and in here maybe I'll set the value this value up to. 100 and then for the slider we'll give it a max value of 50 but 50 is probably going to be a bit much so now we'll uh, oh, as another side note a really useful thing you can do if you want to take all of the inputs uh, uh, all of the outputs from one component to another if you press Control Shift and then click, you can drag everything from one to the other. And uh, now it's going to mess up our surface from points at the end because instead of uh, creating 10 points like we had, we've created 11 points. So you might be wondering why if we've plugged 10 steps into the range component, it's giving 11 outputs. And that's because it creates 10 segments. So 0 to 10 is one segment, 10 to 20 is one segment, 30 to, uh, 20 to 30 is one segment, and so basically what you have is 10 spaces instead of 10 numbers. So what we can do is we can grab an expression, we can go x plus 1, plug that into there, and then this is our new u value over here. And so if we increase this to 20, you can see we get a surface with much higher fidelity. We could go up to 30, and we could get an even finer surface. And so maybe now, we could add a few more points in. Maybe one in this corner, one over here, one over here, and one here. And make a new point component. Set all those points. Plug them in. And... There we go. We could. Hang on, let's try this right up to 50. Yeah, it didn't seem to do too much, but there's our result a nice, fine, and flowing surface.
Um, if we wanted to get this piece of geometry out into Rhino, for whatever reason, we'll just select this item here, and I have a middle mouse button click, or spacebar, and press the bake button. And there we go, there it is in Rhino.